to this now, an environmental assessment has found that the Clip River, which winds through Soweto and Lanasia and feeds into the Val River, has an alarming presence of polycyclic hydrocarbons. The study by University of Johannesburg researchers says the cancer-causing organic pollutants were accumulating at levels high enough to potentially harm humans, animals, and aquatic life. Samuel Magobe, a researcher in the Department of Chemical Sciences at the university, is going to tell us more about this polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. What are those, Samuel? Uh, uh, good, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you so much for having us. Uh, the, the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, those are organic contaminants or organic compounds that when that can get to the water system like in different ways, depending on the primary sources that are near the surrounding area. So these contaminants are uh, uh, this data is a priority pollutant by the United States Environmental and the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Because of this contaminants when they're in contact with it can be in a, in a way when they're in contact with human beings, animals, as well as the environment itself, they result in like carcinogenicity, genotoxicity as well as you can name all of that new new, new, new Mutation, right? What brings about these contaminants? Uh, the primary sources that have been uh, implemented by the studies, uh, I think they depend because the study was done in seasons, so the, the, there's variation in terms of contaminants. But the the implemented ones includes the industrial activities that are happening in the vicinity of the river, as well as because that leads to sewage that makes way to the water system. And then we also noticed some improper waste disposal that was happening in the vicinity of the river. Okay. Now, potentially they can cause harm to human health, to animals, and to aquatic life, your report um, says. Mm -hmm. Who should take responsibility? Whose job, uh, is, whose job is it to keep the water mm -hmm. clean? Oh, I think the findings of our study really like it highlights very valuable information that can be used by environmental regulatory bodies as well as policymakers and waste management authorities. I think that the people who need to who can assist us or who can protect the the water, the water system as well as the community members. So, in other words, I mean, you're saying it's or you're suggesting it's twofold. Uh, the community has a responsibility to look after the water and ensure that um, they don't dump things that are not supposed to be dumped there. And on the other, the municipality has to also take responsibility for looking after the health um, of the people by ensuring um, that the water is clean. Yes, that, that's what I'm saying. I think if in future we would recommend something like uh, we can host campaigns that that will also inform proper regulatory bodies as well as community members on the hazardous or maybe it can be other emerging environmental con contaminants just to let them know about what that the improper waste management can be to the best kind of contaminants that can affect them in the ways that we have found. We need education for the communities, but yes. for their part, is the municipality doing what it is supposed to do in situations like these or to safeguard these um, uh, types of um, um, areas? So they come again? As far as you are aware, as far as you know, is the municipality, yes. you, you mentioned education programs, educating the communities about the dangers of dropping stuff that should not be dropped in um, areas like these. But I'm saying for their part, does, as, as far as you are aware, does the municipality do what it ought to do in, in terms of safeguarding um, these kinds of resources? 
Uh, truly, from from the point of view on mm-hmm. how these people, these people have been handling their waste management, uh, it doesn't anyhow really shows that there's been proper implementations of such campaigns, as well as like maybe we can talk about strategies just to mitigate the pollution levels in the water system. So basically, we can also like find a way to 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 talk to people who are people who owners of the industry basically and and then also inform them in proper waste management because I think that's the major problem with regards to a lot of industries that are in the vicinity of the river. That's what I've seen. And then they, if the community were well informed or maybe I don't know if ever they, they really don't want to follow the protocols. But I don't think people around the area are well informed with the waste management. And I'm asking uh, that question because um, according to um, one of your partners in this uh, research, Dr. Mm -hmm. Ambusha, Dr. Ambusha says, and I quote, these toxins don't just vanish. They linger in sediments, enter the food chain, and accumulate in humans and yes. animals uh, over time. That, that concept comes from this. These toxins, most of them, they get from, they, they are from maybe, let's say, whatever primary sources that you have applied, such as your industrial, as well as your, your, your what you call, urban, increase in urbanization that's happening, obviously. And then what happens is that those pollutants, they get inside the water. Right? And then they just they don't just move or finish away. They get to be trapped in the sediment. Hence, we did sediment analysis because now the river is going to be acting as a reservoir of politics. In fact, I mean, where, where, where I was going with the question is that if, as um, Professor Ambusha says, these toxins don't just vanish, it then means that someone has to go in there and remove them, do something. Um, um, about it, while your um, research has done well to highlight the problem and its origins, but also its impact or effect on human beings, on aquatic life, uh, and on animals, someone has to now go and actually do something about the problem you've identified. But it's not a study yes, yes. for the sake of uh, a study. Yes, I think, I think, I think someone, yeah, really needs to make sure that those pollutants are maybe removed in a way or let's just find a strategy that's going to limit the arguments so that at least with time maybe changing seasons we can have maybe a lot of rainfall that maybe can remove them slowly but surely we don't know but if ever they keep on piling up in the in the sediment for that long time then they'll cause a really negative impact on the aquatic organic. Samuel Makobe, let me thank you very much for your time. He's a researcher at the University of uh, Johannesburg.